Did you know? Undertale's concept of befriending monsters rather than killing them was largely inspired by the demon recruiting mechanic from the Shin Megami Tensei series. This mechanic allows players to negotiate with their enemies through a talk command and potentially recruit them as an ally. In an interview with fellow indie dev Sean Hogan, Undertale creator Toby Fox said, I wanted to make an RPG game where you could befriend all of the bosses, where not killing everything is actually a viable option. Most RPGs are endless murder fests. How many monsters do you kill? And to what end? Everything sort of naturally arose from that concept. Toby also wanted to make each monster feel like an individual, as monsters in most RPGs would simply attack the player over and over again with predictable reckless abandon. The defensive parts of the battle system were inspired by the defense mechanics from the Mario and Luigi RPG series, as well as bullet hell shooting games like Toho Project. Toby has also stated that Breath of Fire 3 is one of the RPGs that has influenced him the most, as well as Chrono Trigger. Creating the battle system was the first stage of development, and preceded the creation of the game's characters, story, and setting. Some of the content in Undertale did exist before the combat system, however. Sansa's battle theme, Megalovania, was originally created for a Halloween hack of Earthbound that Toby released in 2008. A second version of the song was also released as part of the webcomic Homestuck. Surprisingly, there's a chance that Megalovania might have never been made. When Toby was creating his Earthbound Halloween hack, he planned to use the track Megalomania from the Japan-exclusive RPG Live a Live as the final boss theme. Toby elaborated in his making of Earthbound Halloween documents saying, I wanted to put Live a Live's Megalomania in here, but I didn't get to, so I made my own last boss song. I pretty much just yelled whatever I felt like into a mic and copied it down. Yep. Took forever, but it was super kick-ass worth it. Total embodiment of final bossitude. The tracks Fallen Down and Another Medium also existed before Undertale, and the themes Heartache, Bone Trousel, and Papyrus's theme were all made for a different RPG by Toby that never came to fruition. The tracks Death by Glamour and Metal Crusher were also partly based on a previous track. Toby did the track as a fan-made theme for a character in the webcomic Cucumber Quest. Most of the music created for Undertale was constructed using free sound fonts and synths in the popular program FL Studio. This method of music making led to the creation of songs such as Thundersnail, which was made using a single sample with some slight editing. Thundersnail isn't the only track that has an interesting use of samples. The track Dog Song was made using the Mario Paint sound font, which Toby has used in the past for his work on Homestuck. The track that plays after Mediton bursts out of the wall titled It's Showtime is composed entirely of instruments found on the Yamaha YM2612 sound chip, which is the same sound chip used in the Sega Genesis. Both Sans and Papyrus are named after popular fonts. Sans is particularly known for this, with most of his text being in lowercase comic Sans. When Sans speaks seriously, however, he uses 8-bit Operator, which is another Sans Serif font. Both skeletons draw inspiration from the webcomic Helvetica, which stars a skeleton protagonist also named after a font. The creator of the Helvetica webcomic, J.N. Weedle, even appears in Undertale's credits as a special inspiration. Various aspects of the game's world were inspired by the Mother series, and this can be seen in Papyrus's design. The markings on Papyrus his chestplate are identical to the marks on the chest of the Starman from Earthbound. Toriel was created as a parody of tutorial characters, with Toby Fox citing Fee from The Legend of Zelda Skyward Sword as a notable influence. Fox said, I played Skyward Sword and despised how often Fee would give me the answer to a puzzle. I figured that if someone was that concerned about you, then they wouldn't tell you the answers. They would just do the puzzles and fight all the monsters for you. This is why she literally holds your hand through a segment of the game. Her motherly personality was chosen both as an extension of her hand holding and due to the lack of genuine motherly characteristics in other RPGs like Pokemon or Earthbound. Though uncommon, it's also possible to die in the fight against Toriel. Accomplishing this causes her to show a shocked expression on her face for a split second before going to the game over screen. Toriel also has an unused sprite that is nearly identical to her death sprite. The file is named SBR underscore Toriel Boss underscore Suicide. It is possible that Toriel was originally going to commit suicide in one of the game's scenarios. This isn't that out of place either, as Asgore can also commit suicide. If the player already killed Flowey in a previous play, playthrough of the game, Flowey won't kill Asgore after you show him mercy. Instead, Asgore forces the player to take his soul and urges them to find a way to free everyone. The short track that plays before the fight against Asgore is called Bergen Trukung. Bergen Trukung is a concept from European mythology and folklore, and is commonly known in English as the King in the Mountain. The trope usually involves a sleeping or dormant hero who will one day awaken to save the day. Asgore's place in the story of Undertale is a literal representation of the trope's name, as he's a king in the underground of Mount Ebat. Mount Ebat might also be a reference to Toby Fox himself, as it's very similar to his name when spoken backwards. In one of Fox's biggest inspirations, the Mother series, there's a place called Mount Itoi. This area is named after Mother creator Shigesato Itoi. 
Undine's name derives from the Undine, which are female spirits or nymphs inhabiting water. They can vary greatly in appearance and were first named in the writings of the 15th century Swiss occultist Paracelsus, which have become a part of German folklore. The Temi species in Undertale is named after artist Temi Chang, who worked on the game. According to Temi's blog, the appearance of the Temi race was based on a simple doodle done by artist Betty Kwong. They didn't know what Temi actually looked like, so they made a drawing based on Temi's personality traits. Temi then made the doodle into her mascot, and the Temi race represented her with an Undertale. Temi isn't the only developer to cameo in Undertale. The recurring annoying dog character is a representation of the game's creator, Toby Fox. Flowey the Flower has a very distinctive laugh. <laughs> What's interesting is this laugh is used by an enemy in the PlayStation game Tomba, known as Tombi in Europe, and the enemy is even a flower. Don't forget to subscribe to Did You Know Gaming for more facts and trivia. If you liked this video, then give it a like. And if you're a fan of Nintendo, click the annotation on screen to watch the Did You Know Gaming video on Mario glitches. And hey, my name is Rich. I play guitar and do metal video game covers over on my channel. If you're a fan of Undertale and its music, I did a whole slew of Undertale covers, which actually got put on an album which is officially approved and sanctioned by Toby Fox himself. You can check out the videos for all those covers over on my channel, as well as the official album stream. So, you know, there's all kinds of buttons on screen, so push buttons and subscribe and, and all that stuff. And we'll see you next time.